Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we want to return to the subject of B-Link and NADS. About a month ago, I made a video about when I went over to Shenzhen, China and spoke to the founder of the company and a bunch of the employees at the Shenzhen H quarters talking about their plans to roll out multiple different NAS solutions. 2025, although there have been a lot of different NAS rolled out, I would argue in the field of DIY, affordable little flash for Proxmox, True NAS and more, Things like this, the ME Mini, really rocked the boat in terms of what people expected for their money, a little six bay solution. And the brand didn't sit around. And although they talked about a lot of different solutions with me, the one that we're talking about today is their first of this new range rolling out, the B-Link ME Pro. Now this is a traditional, 3.5 inch and M.2 NVMe hybrid compact system. Focusing on the word mini, I will say they are gonna, that's kind of what they're going for as far as the whole raison d'etre and their whole USP here. All of these now solutions that they're gonna roll out are designed around compact nature. They're not the first to do that. A lot of NAS solutions have tried to be compact, but they've always had to deal with heat. They've had to deal with noise of fans and ultimately trying to balance power efficiency and ability versus just not overheating and throttling beyond all measure. And that was why this little six bay was so important. Now, this new device, the ME Pro, is gonna arrive in two configurations. Uh, there's gonna be a configuration that features the Intel N95 CPU and probably the more popular N150 CPU. Both quad-core Intel CPUs, but I argue the N150 is the one that people are gonna be more in love with. It's the same one that was featured in that little six bay there. Now, the N95 version, again, they're both quad-core, uh, four-core, four-thread CPUs there. The N95 version is gonna be the more affordable of the two. It's gonna be arriving with 12 gig, of low power DDR4 memory, uh, whereas the N150 version is gonna arrive with 16 gig. Now, one of the things I've not had an ability, I uh, had the opportunity to confirm is that how that memory is going to be applied. I know that it's going to be sodium on the N150 version there, because that was the version that we saw when we visited the brand, but the N95 version, I'm not 100% certain. Also, I know I've said this in other videos, but anyone else in here N95, do you think of that lovely little Nokia phone? I know I do. Also, both of these models are gonna arrive with a base OS SSD included. The N95 version is gonna arrive with a 512 gig SSD inside, and the uh, N150 version is gonna arrive with a terabyte SSD included with the price. Now, let's talk about storage beyond that. Now, this these are both two bay solutions there. That's two SATA bays on their own hot swappable trays. Although it doesn't look like they're gonna be click and load, it looks like they're gonna be thumb screw based on the side there. But still nonetheless, it means you're gonna be able to use 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch SATA drives. No word on the controller yet. Both of those CPUs have only really got nine lanes to play with. So spreading things out as we go further into these specs is gonna be pretty impressive there. Insofar as these devices arrive with three M.2 NVMe bays. So these are both technically five bay solutions. The two SATA legacy storage drives uh, for the larger, more affordable data and three M.2 NVMe's, presumably one occupied by that o uh, the OS SSD storage I mentioned earlier on. But more interestingly, one of those M.2 NVMe bays is Gen 3 times two speed. The other two are Gen 3 times one. That means uh, you're looking at uh, around 1.5 to 1.6 gigabit uh, gigabytes per second on that three times two, and around eight to 900 megabytes per second potential on the other two. Again, you're looking at these uh, Alder Lake Twin Lake CPUs over the last few years, you'll know that you're not really gonna be able to assign absolutely crap loads of lanes to them. So we kind of expected it to be those kind of speeds and those uh, uh, kind of limited uh, bandwidth affordability. But interestingly, it's the network connectivity that intrigues me. And that is that both of these devices arriving with a 2.5 gigabit network port and a five gigabit network port. Now, 2025 and going into 2026, you're gonna see a lot more solutions starting to roll out with five gig networking by default. Things like the new Acer Store Gen 2 Plus series there, uh, TerraMaster went in with five gigabit networking there. We've seen Unify engage with 5GBE more with USB adapters as well. And I'm almost certain we're gonna start seeing new QNAPs and other turnkey solutions next year with five gig by default. What's interesting here is this is one of the earliest DIY OS free NAS solutions where you pick your own operating system of choice arriving with five gig out the gate. I've not seen that. I've only ever seen 2.5 gig or a premium for 10 gig. Now, 
I, th I think there are going to be users that are a little disappointed at the lack of 10 gig here, especially with those uh, PCIe slots there when you've got three of them could easily saturate that fully. But still nonetheless, depending on how they hit the price point, and we'll get to that later on, this could still be very attractive indeed there. Also, there is talk of a larger four bay version of these devices as well coming out. And I'm wondering whether they are going to streamline those PCIe's a little bit, maybe only have two, maybe up them or down them, change the CPU. We saw them already talking about uh, the uh, 255 CPU inside one of them and an AI powered device using the uh, 395 processor from AMD. But at least as far as these little two bays are concerned, you're still going to be able to have a decent little balance there between power efficiency, power output, and storage capabilities down the road. Now, in terms of further connectivity, there's pretty much everything you'd expect. There's a couple of USB 2s, there's a 10 gig uh, USB connection there, and that's USB type C, and there's an HDMI 4K 60 Hertz connection as well there. The design of the chassis, although I don't have that many images of it right now, I've got all of the stock footage that we saw when we were playing with it over in Shenzhen and some early official images as well. And it's utilizing that very compact chassis there, but also that really nice slide out uh, base panel there to access the MOBO to you know perform maintenance, troubleshoot and that sort of thing. And the system also has a base removable metal panel that can be lifted off to access the M.2 NVMe slots, which also acts by the way as a heatsink. Digital slide out mechanic isn't too dissimilar to that of some of the Minis Forum workstations. But even if you look at the Minis Forum N5 NAS, this thing is substantially smaller and as mentioned, available in this two bay configuration, something we've not seen. Now, when we do have one here in the studio, you better believe I'm gonna be looking at thermals. Yes, I'm gonna be looking at fan noise because I know there's a fan based on the, uh, the CPU there based inside. You can see it there on top of the heatsink, but I don't know too much about the rear of the device and what that fan is going to be, RPM, scale and more. So noise is something I'm gonna be concerned with on that device because when we look at the ME Mini, because underneath this plastic, it is just one giant heatsink, not dissimilar to that for CPU with a giant fan on the top. I'm gonna to be intrigued to see just how much they've learned from this and then I apply it to this device. Again, to their credit, when we were over there in Shenzhen, they showed me some of the schematics, some of the thermal prints of that two bay showing the airflow through the device, the temperature gain, the temperature loss, ultimately, this is not a solution they have rushed out the gate. They've spent a year enjoying the ME, uh, the ME Mini success, and no doubt a lot of, if not the funding, then the development knowledge and things they've learned have gone into this. Now, at the time of recording, there's still some things I don't know that maybe when you're watching this, maybe the official pages have gone live and maybe they've gone live while I'm editing this and I'm putting notes on screen. But here's some examples of, of things I do not know. Number one, the price. I still don't know what the price of the N95 and the N150 is going to be. Dollars, pounds, euros, whatever. I think they are going to aim affordably. The ME Mini arrived out of the gate at around $200, 209 as I recall. So... That was already a 6-bay M.2 NVMe N150 CPU NAS. So realistically, I think they're going to sit this, if not at around the 299 mark, then maybe somewhere between 299 and 399, I think, for the scale. But again, that's me purely pulling that out of the sky based on what everyone else has done. And again, we still don't know the differentiation between the N95 and the N150 version. And of course, those differences in hardware architecture. The other thing I'm not sure about on this device right now is the PSU, because they were in the process of scaling up the PSU on the, uh, on the ME Mini model to actually uh, change the CPU arrangement inside, but still keep that internal PSU there. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the case on this system. And if they're able to block it there inside, behind the main uh, mobile and CPU there using that micro IT, uh, ITX board inside there that's custom made. Again, maybe this has already been confirmed and on screen, I've either cut this out or I put on screen exactly what the answer is. But that's really all we know. They are aiming for release in December 2025. Now, whether that is announcement or full release availability to buy, pre-order, etc., I don't know. But that's really everything we know right now about the B-Link ME Pro. So what do you guys think? Does this sound like a great little pre-built DIY NAS solution for your needs? Or 
Are you still in love with that previous generation 6 by M.2? Let me know in the comments below. There'll also be an article over to NAS Compares linked in the description, which I will update as more information arrives. So if you're watching this a few days, weeks, months after this video has been published, no doubt that article below will give you more information and it's far more up to date. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.